we are looking at the ways by which we can study and elucidate metabolic pathways. A very important methodology adopted in order to understand metabolic pathways is by gene silencing. It can be uh, a naturally occurring mutation also or you can induce a mutation in order to understand metabolic pathways. Let us begin with a naturally occurring process that is in the uh, metabolism of tyrosine. So in the metabolism of tyrosine, so met, uh, tyrosine is synthesized from phenylalanine by a series of steps. Now, if the, one of the important enzyme in this conversion is an enzyme known as phenylalanine hydroxylase. It is an important enzyme. Now, if the phenylalanine hydroxylase is absent, we denote by a negative sign here. If this enzyme is absent, what will happen? Phenylalanine cannot be converted to tyrosine. And if the products intermediates that will get accumulated are here, this is off. What will get accumulated are phenyl acetate, phenyl pyruvate, phenyl lactate. All these intermediates get accumulated. So therefore, by silencing a particular gene or creating mutants is an effective way of understanding metabolic pathways. You are aware that this is a very uh, uh, important metabolic disorder known as phenylketonuria. Now the same methodology or the same concept was used by two very famous scientists, Beadle and Totem. They elucidated or they developed a concept of one gene one enzyme hypothesis. What did they do? Let us try to understand their experiment. So they were working with the bread mold which is known as the Neurospora crassa. So they tried to induce a mutation in the Neurospora crassa by exposing the mold to X-rays. So here is the Neurospora crassa sample, the mold. So exposed to X-rays, X-rays is exposed. So it becomes, we assume that the DNA got mutated. So therefore, you are creating mutated Neurospora crassa. Now in the mutated species, they mixed with in the wild type, the non-mutated, the non-radiated. So therefore, they mixed it, non-mutated. So, after that, what did they do? They allowed the species, allowed both of them to grow on uh, a complete medium. So, a meaning of a complete media, it has all the nutrients, it has all the vitamins, all the hormones, all whatever is required, all amino acid, whatever is required, it is available for either uh, in the species to grow. So it will grow naturally here in the complete media. When it was growing on complete media, they transferred the colonies into a minimal media. So what is the meaning of minimal media? So minimal media contains, uh, it will not have amino acids and they also removed all the vitamins except biotin and then they were trying to see what is happening so they created two sets one with the vitamins another one with the um, uh, they, without one without vitamins another one without amino acids they found in the one without amino acids cannot survive at all so therefore they drew the conclusion that it is amino acid which is playing a crucial role in in the mutated species so they are not able to survive now they have they are colonies in the growing in the minimal media now what they did is uh, 
from this minimal media they are trying to introduce each of the 20 amino acids one after the other in order to find out which amino acid is so essential for this neurospora crassa to survive so they discovered it is arginine it is arginine now when you look at the in the, in the metabolic pathway for the synthesis of arginine you have a precursor molecule which is converted to arginine and in the process there are two intermediates that are formed one is citrulline another one is ornithine so these are the two intermediates crucial intermediates which means we have an enzyme let us call it enzyme e1 here which will convert this precursor molecule to ornithine enzyme e2 will convert ornithine into citrulline and enzyme e3 will convert citrulline into arginine so arginine is an essential amino acid now what they have done is assume let us apply the logic assume if e1 is inhibited if that is the enzyme which is mutated so if the organism cannot survive but if ornithine is added ornithine is given then enzyme e2 is present enzyme e3 is present so ornithine will be converted to citrulline citrulline to arginine and neurospora crassa can survive assume e2 is inhibited or mutated if you give ornithine here, the organism cannot survive because ornithine cannot be converted to citrulline. You have to give citrulline, then only it can make arginine. Similarly, suppose you inhibit the enzyme E3. If you give ornithine, it cannot be converted to arginine because this enzyme is mutated. So you have to supply in the minimal media arginine. So by using this kind of experiments, they have tried to prove that one gene will code for one enzyme or one protein. And we come to know in the significance, in the importance of uh, mutation in elucidating metabolic pathways. A very important technique which is used to understand metabolic pathway is NMR so uh, in NMR based the principle we know that uh, wherever for example P31 if it is incorporated into a molecule depending on its neighboring structure it will resonate we know that in the resonance frequency of a magnetic uh, moment is influenced by its neighbor so if p31 is incorporated into a particular molecule either we should be able to identify where it is incorporated so this p31 nmr is uh, it is very much used in order to understand the the the, 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 the uh, structure of uh, muscles the metabolism of muscles a classic example is P31, it has been patented, patented in order to identify the race horses. So you know the race horses have its own, it should have a special kind of muscle for racing that cannot, should not get easily tired and should have the endurance capacity. These kinds of muscles can be identified at a very young age in the horses by using uh, P31 NMR. So this technique has been used in order to identify uh, those horses with this kind of uh, superior muscles that can be used for races. So in this series, what we have done is we have looked at various techniques that are used in order to elucidate metabolic pathways. So to summarize, we have looked at uh, uh, organ studies, 
we have looked at perfusion studies we have looked at uh, inhibitors we have used uh, we have looked at the uh, structural analogs we have looked at the uh, reporter genes we have looked at inserting a foreign gene mutation that can lead to understanding a metabolic pathways we looked at nmr as a methodology for understanding metabolic pathways all these methods have been uh, we have looked at all these in order to understand uh, the methods that are used for understanding metabolic pathways